Read that last part again. My people do not what? My people do not consider. You see how truthful the Bible is? Our people don't even consider who they are. They can care less. They okay with being an African-American, even though that got forced on you in slavery through hanging, through burning, through lynching, okay, through castration. They okay with being called an African-American because their mindset is destroyed. They don't even know who they are. They don't even, the men don't even know that they're gods on the earth. That's why they're walking around smoking cigarettes to fall in their temple. Okay, that's why they can care less about getting the kingdom of God. It's okay, you don't know. Why? Because your enemy has told you that they're so okay. No, that, they did. Go ahead, uh, give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Is this something that you do? They, in a way, they might not came up to you physically and told you that it's okay, but they sell it to you, right? You got the opportunity. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. You got the opportunity to take your hard-earned money and go into the stores and buy the cigarettes, right? Okay, they sell it to you, even though they know that it's going to kill you. That, that's why. That's my point. Okay, they doing this to you. They you do it to yourself. Yes. I'm not arguing with you. Go ahead. Watch it. Watch it. But to the Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Young man right here, what's your nationality? I ain't going to, I'm going to get to you. What's your, what's your nationality? Four, Mexican, so-called Mexican. Y'all believe in the Bible? Did y'all know that the so-called Mexicans is part of the 12 tribes? Y'all went through the same atrocities that the so-called blacks went through. Remember in 1492, when, the, when Christopher Columbus came over here and took the land from you? You are oppressed people just like we are oppressed. That's right. Okay, because y'all do not know who you truly are. Take, it's time for you to take back your land. Take back your God. Take back your, back your true culture. Your name has not always been Mexican. Your name has not always been African American. Your name has not always been Puerto Rican. These are slave names that have been put on you. You know what happened? The only thing different between y'all is that you got put on different... You got let go on different parts of the slave ship. Some of y'all got let off in Puerto Rico. Some of y'all got let off in Haiti. Some of y'all got let off in the Dominican Republic. Okay, but you are still the same. Watch this, go ahead. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Bible says that you do not hearken unto God that he's going to put all these curses upon the children of Israel. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel after they came out of Egypt. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel, right? And and he went up on the mount to talk to the Most High. The Most High told him, hey, go down there and teach the children of Israel my law. And if they listen, they will be blessed among all people. They will be the rulers of the earth. The earth was made for them, made for us. Okay, but on the flip side of that, if they do not hearken unto God's law, he said what? He's going to do what? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So let's read some of these curses and see if we fit that. Read on. Curse shall not be in the city. So Moses, or God told the children of Israel that if you do not hearken unto his law, statutes, and commandments, that all these curses are going to be upon you. The Bible says, curse should you be in the city. Right here in Charlotte, it doesn't matter what city you go to across the world. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the ones that's cursed. That's why there's drugs all in your community. That's why there's abortion clinics in your community. Uh, single, single parent household in our community. Okay? The L LGBTQ, whatever, is running rampant in our community. Okay? If everybody fell into that lifestyle, there would be no more life. You know what I'm saying? That is a curse. Murder, hanging. Okay, our people are getting choked out. They're getting shot in the streets. Okay, oppressed, redlining, gentrification. All of these things. We can probably get cursed if you want. Cursed shall not be in the city. We are cursed in the city. We are cursed here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We are cursed in uh, North New Jersey. We are cursed in Brooklyn and New York and all these places. We are cursed in California, Los Angeles. It's us that's cursed. Okay, we don't. And curse shall not be in the field. The Bible says curse should you be in the field. Let's get some depiction on how we were cursed in the field. Okay? You got us picking sugar cane, picking tobacco, picking uh, uh, indigo, picking all these things for no wages. Forced to do it. Okay? That's cursed in the field. Nowadays, we're building up their, uh, their kingdom. We're still cursed in the field. 
uh, first, what's that, first buyer, last hire. Okay, we're the ones that still push to the field. Go ahead, we don't. Right back, jump to verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. The Bible says our sons and daughters shall be given to another people. Did that happen to us? It did. Wait. A long time ago in, in slavery. All right. Remember, jump to verse 46 and then we're going to go back. I don't want to hold you too long. I already see you trying to step. I don't want to hold you too long, but I, I, it's imperative that you that you learn exactly who you are. Go ahead, watch this. Verse 46, uh -huh. and they shall be upon thee for a sign and a wonder. The Bible says that the curses are going to be upon our people for a sign and for a wonder. What does the sign do? No. It shows us where we need to go, who we are, or, or, or what the direction that we should go. So these curses are going to work the same way. They're going to show you which way you need to go. Okay? Would you agree that our sons and daughters are given to another people? You know, mind you, this is being spoken to the children of Israel. Not African Americans, not black, but the children of Israel. So what is that saying about you? If you fit this. Huh? No, 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 that is not for my son. Go back to me, Deuteronomy 76. You are very important to the world. The problem is, is that we've been taught that we're not important to the world. We've been taught to shut up and dribble the ball. We've been taught uh, to devalue ourselves, to not look, uh, look at ourselves like kings and princesses. We've been taught to have that condition, okay, through terrorism, because we are a terrorized people. We've been taught like that, but I want to show you what the Most High God feels about you. And it's not that you are, you are not important. You are the most important people on this earth. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh -huh. for, thou in, me, for thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Bible says that you, the Israelites, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, are a holy people unto God. Read on. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So he chose you to be special. Does that sound like you're not important? It, huh? It sounds like you're important, right? But there's more. He said, God, God, the creator of heaven and earth, said that you are a special people unto him. We Lord, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You hear what the Bible says? You hear what God says? He said that you are above. All people that are upon the face of the earth. Yeah, that yeah. so-called white man, you're supposed to be above them. That so-called Arab man, you're supposed to be above them. That so-called Chinese man, you're supposed to be above them. But in slavery, you have taught, been taught that you are niggas, that you are spits, that you are fools, you are savages, that you are thugs, that you are enemies. That's why, I would, that's why you just said what you said. That she said that I am not important. No! No, that is not what God says. God says what? He said what again? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God says that you are above all people on the face of the earth. Why? Go ahead. The Lord did not set up his love for you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than, more in number than any people. For ye were first abused among all. But because the Lord loved you. Because what? The Lord loved you. That's possessive right there. Because the Lord loved you. When you read in Deuteronomy 1 and 1, it says these are the words that Moses spake to all Israel. Not everybody, but to all Israel. He's only speaking to the Israelites. So when he says the Lord loved you, it's speaking to the Israelites. The Israelites are the ones that fit the curses that we're reading. So what I'm trying to show you is that the Lord chose you. He, that you're a special people, that you're a holy people. Not that you're not important. That's what the other nations want you to believe. And if you believe that, you know what you would do? You don't mind selling drugs to your brothers and your sisters. You don't mind uh, committing adultery. You don't, because you don't see the, the connection between us. Because you don't see how important you are. You don't, we, we, we don't, I, I used to be in the same boat. Okay, not respecting my own people, selling drugs to them, going to the club, going to sleep from that woman to that woman, and didn't care who I got pregnant. I used to have that same mindset, but when I learned who I am, and I learned the word of God, I changed, okay? And that's what we out here trying to teach to our people. We're trying to teach them change. We're trying to teach them to trust in their stuff. Really, don't marry the other nation, okay? That's against God when you read Deuteronomy 73. 
Because the other nation would teach you this right here. Who is this? Who do you think that is? When you just look at the picture, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? The white man, okay. But what else? Give me something else. He's some type of king of that. He, um, is, can you find him in, in, in churches? You, right, you can find him in churches. So in the churches, who are they saying he is? He said, they say, that so the world says that that is Christ or Jesus. So do you believe that? You don't, right? And you shouldn't, because the Bible goes against that. Give me that revelation. Do y'all know what Christ looks like? What does Christ look like? How about my sister right here? What does Christ look like? Go ahead and read that. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hair were white like wool. I want everyone to understand what we're reading. We are reading the King James Version Bible, the Holy Bible. That's sitting on your nightstand. That's, that's sitting in your car. That is not being opened and read. Okay? We're reading about the Christ, about Jesus the Christ. What does he look like? I need to ask everyone a question. Is this Jesus the Christ? Because he's in your, all your churches. He's around your neck. He's tattooed on your arm. Okay? Let's see what the Bible says Christ really looks like. Read it again. His head and his hair were white like wool. It says Christ's hair was uh, white and woolly like that. Like your hair. Like my brother's hair right here. Like your sister's hair that's walking down the uh, steps. Okay? Not golf straight hair. Not straight hair. But it says his Christ's hair was woolly. Read it on. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now we get to his feet. It says his feet, Christ's feet, was like unto fine brass. What color is brass? It's like a penny. What color is a penny, sir? What color is a penny? Huh? Copper. What color is copper? Wait, what's the derivative of it? Huh? Red. What red penny have you ever seen? What color is a penny? No, you don't know. Now nobody knows what the color of I tell you, don't worry about it. I tell you. It's the color, one of y'all said it, like copper. What color uh, does copper come from? Like a brown. But it goes farther than just a brown. Go ahead. As if they burn in a furnace. So you take that same brown, anything that you burn in a furnace, what color would it become? Huh? Don't burn, if I burn, if I burn your sneakers in a, uh, in a furnace, what color would it become? You say dark brown? It comes black. It becomes black. Right. Read that again. What can start in verse 1? The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of Jesus Christ. This is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Because in your churches, you're being taught that this is your Lord and Savior. That's what's in our uh, grandma's house. It, it may not be in your house, but I know when I came up, it was in grandma's house. It was in our churches. Okay, it's being put it's on your TV. Uh, the Passion of Christ. What color did it depict Christ as in the, the movie, The Passion of Christ? What color did it depict him? Huh? And white, right? So we're reading out of the Bible, the revelation, the revealing of Jesus to Christ. Jump back to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hair were white as wool, as white as snow. His hair. I'm looking at wool hair right here. That's wool hair. I'm looking at wool hair, okay? His head and his hair were white like wool. Okay, we know it. As white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his feet like unto fine brass. The color of brass is like a penny. If you pull out a penny, you can see that it's like a brownish texture or a brownish color. Okay, we know it. As if they burned in a furnace. As if that same penny burned, burned, E.D., past tense. If you burn anything in a furnace, it becomes black. Charcoal black. So who? So my question remains: Who is this? Give me Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-four. Who is this right here? Our people are being dumbed down because they're not reading for themselves. The Bible says, "Blessed are those that read it." Right. If you're not reading for yourself, you will always be deceived. You will always not know the truth. You will not know the truth of your identity. You will not know the truth of your uh, heritage, of your culture, of your language. You will not even know the truth of your Lord and Savior. They don't say that's him. But we just read out of the Holy Bible that the Lord and Savior of Black Christ looks like her, looks like him, looks like you, looks like me. If we look at each other like we all have Christ to one another, we can eliminate abortions. That's right. We can eliminate murder. We can eliminate drug selling. 
We can be the changers of our community. Right. You understand? Y'all might think I'm just out here yelling. No, I'm looking for change. Who's going to rise up for God? Our pastors, our leaders, Al Sharpton's not doing it. Barack Obama didn't do it. It's going to be us. The same people that come out of your community. The same people that went through the same atrocities that you went through. The same people that's out here being murdered, being shot with their hands up, being choked out. The same people that's being oppressed. That's us. Christ said that he's coming back to save us from the hands of all that hate us. Oh, you think I'm just making, give me, hold that. Hold that, hold that, Matthew. Give me Luke chapter 1, verse 71. I'm not just speaking out of my own opinion. I'm speaking out of the word of God. Okay, we're going to read what Christ said. Who he said he come to save? Was it the whole world or was it the Israelites? Turn to verse 68. The book of Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. You hear what the Bible says? It says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Not the whole world. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Native Indians. You are the Israelites. You are the chosen seed. But you're not even looking at each other like that. That's why you can walk up and down here, you can listen to the music, where they call each other thoughts, where they call each other niggas, and y'all can, can care less about it. But God said that you're holy, that you're special, that you're above all people upon the face of the earth. Bring it out. Okay, read on. For he has visited and redeemed his people. The Bible says that Christ is coming to redeem his people. Why do the so-called white man need to be redeemed? Be redeemed for what? This didn't happen to him. He didn't have chains and shackles on his neck. What? He didn't come over here in slave ships. What does he need to be redeemed from? He in his kingdom right now. That's why he can make laws. That's why you, that's why they have to uh, pass a council or a law right now for you to vote. Why is that? I thought we were citizens. Why does a law have to be passed for you? A nominated person, a law has to be passed every 25 years for you to vote. Oh, don't believe me? Look it up in your constitution. Look it up. Go ahead. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us unto the house of his servant David. Uh -huh. And as spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, uh -huh. which have been since the world began. His holy prophets are always been the Israelites. And we're going to read that the Israelites have always been a black people. The Jews have always been black people. So those people that's over there in Israel right now, they have stolen your identity. That's right. They have stolen your land. They have stolen your nationality. And they tried to make it theirs. But the most High God said, in the last days, he will raise up prophets where righteousness uh, will spew out of the earth. And you will start to learn who you truly are. Okay, there, where it has been said, you are not God's people. They are in that same captivity. You will learn that you are the true Israelites. That you are the true Jews of the Bible. That's right. Go ahead, read that. That we should be, that we want to, that we should be saved from our enemy. Who is Christ coming to save us from? From our enemy. From our enemies, not your friends, That's not your buddies, not your pals. The Bible says that Christ is coming to save. How can John 3.16 mean, for God so loved the world, if Christ right here says he comes to save a certain group of people from their enemies? You need to find out who are your enemies. Go ahead, finish it up. And from the hand of all that hate us. And you must, uh, you're going to be saved. Christ is saying you're going to be saved from the land of all that hate us. We are hated people. You can see it on your news every day. You can see it throughout your communities every day. Because our people are not being told. But we got to even find out who is our enemy. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 40. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemy. The Bible says because you didn't want to serve God. Because the Israelites didn't want to keep God's commandments. Therefore you're going to serve your enemy. That's the punishment. Just like if you have children and your children do not obey your word that's in your house, you do you, you some type of punishment to them. Whether it be taking away their TV, whether it be a spanking, wherever it may be, they get punished in some type of way. God said, the way I'm going to punish my children, I'm going to make them serve their enemies. How are they going to serve their enemies? Read on. Which the Lord shall sin against thee uh -huh. in hunger. So the Bible says you're going to serve your enemies in hunger. And all of these stuff, you know, we don't own Walmart. We don't own uh, uh, Harris Teeter. 
You're going to serve your enemy in slavery. You have to go to your enemy for the, for the food. Go ahead, read on. And in thirst, uh-huh. and in nakedness, uh-huh. and in the want of all things. Uh-huh. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. This is the best information that any of you can hear at all. It says your same enemy will put a yoke of iron upon your neck until when? Until he has destroyed thee. Until you are a destroyed people. That's why when I ask five different so-called black people what's their nationality, they give me five different answers. I don't know. I'm African American. I'm black. I'm Mexican. Okay? These are all slave names. We have been destroyed by our enemies. Okay? Uh, go back and read it again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Uh-huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy, uh-huh. which the Lord shall sin against thee, uh-huh. in hunger, uh-huh. and in thirst, uh-huh. and in nakedness, uh-huh. and in the want of all things. And the want of all things, he's gonna, he's gonna, uh, you're going to have to serve your enemy. If you want a birth certificate, you got to go to your enemy. If you want a death certificate, if you want religion, if you want uh, education, Anything that you want. If you want to leave the country, you got to go get a passport. But they got the nerve to tell you that you're free. How are you free? Free means that you got the liberty to do whatever it is that you want. How are you free? But you got to go to them for a passport if you want to leave the country. You're not free. You still them same slaves that got off them slave ships. You still them same, same slaves that got a yoke of iron upon their neck. The only difference is now is they took it off your neck, they took it off your hands, or your, your, your wrists and your ankles, and they put it on your mind. That's why we can look at each other as niggas, as spicks, as coons. That's why we can rap about the things that we rap about. That's why, that's why you gotta be worried about the next young thug in your community robbing you. Because we don't know who we are. It's not one of the inconvenient. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Until you have this, until you have been destroyed. You can just look at our communities and tell that we're destroyed. The Bible says marriage is honorable and all. But our people is walking up, you got sisters walking by, holding hands. Is that biblical? Is that righteous toward God? Because I, I really want you to think that this is not to get on people, it's just to correct them because that type of mentality is a destructive mentality. If that's just like everybody on the earth, men was into men and women is within to women. In the, in the next 70 to 100 years, guess what? Everybody will be dead. Why? Because nobody can reproduce. The Bible says be fruitful and multiply. How can you do that if you are uh, having the same sex marriage? That's against God. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Because you want to get the kingdom, right? You would like to. You would like to, right? So let's find out who will not, who will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. This is from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Uh-huh. Know ye not that no unrighteous shall not yet inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. To be righteous, when you read in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 25, it means to keep the commandments of God. So the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. We don't. Be not deceived. He's a fornicator. Be not deceived. So it don't matter if Obama said that a man can marry a man. It don't matter if Obama passed a law saying that a woman can marry a woman. Be not deceived. Neither what? He's a fornicator. Fornicator. We asked a couple that was walking up and down the street if they were married. They said no. So if they're having sex, you are in the midst of fornication. So neither fornicator. What? Uh, brother and sister, are y'all married? Brother and sister, are y'all married? Why not? Why y'all not married? Why y'all not married? You believe in the Bible, right? You believe in the Bible? You don't believe in the Bible? Oh my goodness. That's the Bible our community. They don't even believe in the word of God. So so when it says thou shalt not hate thy brother and uh, uh, thou shalt not hate thy brother in their heart, they don't even believe in that. So they would think that it's okay to murder one another. They would that's the problem in our community. Then you gotta get it. Uh, read that again. Be not deceived, you no fornicators, no idolaters. No adulterers! And mind you, mind you, I guarantee you that they go to church on Sunday. 
That's how you know these damn churches are a bunch of liars. They are a bunch of liars. I guarantee you they go to church. I guarantee you. But they'll tell you they don't believe in the Bible. But I can believe that because the pastor is not teaching them the word of God. The pastor is not teaching them who they are. They're not teaching them the Lord. If they were teaching them the law, they would teach them uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, where it says the women should uh, adorn themselves in modest apparel. They would teach them Leviticus 21, verse 5, where it says the midwives shall have a beard on their face. These are laws. You might think that it's nothing, but these are the ways of the word of God. You would know that today is the Sabbath. They got a case of Charlotte going on up down the street, right? But because they're not being taught the word of God, they don't know that it's not okay to buy on the Sabbath. It's not okay to cook on the Sabbath. It's not okay to sell on the Sabbath. Today is the Sabbath day of the Lord. But because these churches and these pastors are not teaching the people the correct way, it's the blind leading the blind. They don't even know which way to go. They lost out here. The, 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 the laws, they broke it at noonday. They are in gross darkness. They have no idea. They don't know today was the Sabbath day. This is do y'all even care that today is the Sabbath day? Do y'all even care that y'all are the greatest people that ever walked the face of the earth? How can y'all not care about that? That's why I don't understand. I don't get it. Why, why wouldn't our people want to know that they are the greatest people on the earth? Why? Because you have been conditioned to hate yourself. You have been conditioned to murder each other. You have been conditioned to sell drugs to one another. It's all over your media. It's all over your TV. It's all over your TikTok. That's why these women, they will twerk on TikTok with their little five-year-old little girl right next to them. And they think that it's cute. They think that it's okay. What, um, what righteous people is going to teach that? What grown man would teach their young daughter how to twerk? Let me ask this. Sister right here. Sister and brother. Would y'all teach our young girl how to twerk? Do y'all think that's appropriate as parents? It's an easy question. No, the answer is no. But you can look on TikTok today. You have young black women that are teaching their daughters that's young as four or five years old. They're teaching them how to twerk. How are they teaching them how to do that? Because they'll, they'll do it by an example. They'll do it right there in front of their faces. And when we have grown people that can't even answer a simple question like that, it means that you're okay with that. You're okay with that. You might not necessarily do it with your daughter, but if you see somebody else do it, oh, that's cute. Ah, this, that, and this, you know what I mean? You, you, you hit the like button. No, you teach them evil. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models.